Over the last few days, I've been studying diamond level replays in order to find out potential mistakes being made that were holding these players back from ranking up. These mistakes do happen in the lower ranks as well, but I tried to look for things that don't happen as often in the ranks higher than diamond. So today I'm going to be covering 9 different mistakes that diamond level players make in Rocket League and how to correct them. Let's get right into it. One of the biggest mistakes that I see diamond level players making is booming the ball away from them whenever they have a chance at possession. If you can resist the urge to slam the ball and instead dribble it upfield, you can create a play that has a much better chance at scoring. If you're not able to find a way to score after taking possession, you should look to see if your teammates are ready for a pass. The few seconds that your dribble possession takes should buy your teammate enough time to grab boost and get back in position for a play. If you boom the ball away instantly, it could reach your opponents before your teammate has even grabbed boost. There are a few scenarios that I do smack the ball all the way down the field, or at least try to. One of those is when I know that my teammates are low on boost and are being boost starved. In this scenario, there's a good chance that your opponents are stocked up on boost and will be ready to try and read any 50-50 that happens since your team won't be able to react in time to a shot. Since this is the case, you may as well boom the ball as far from them as possible and try to collect small boost pads if all the big ones are taken. Another scenario that could require some power being applied to the ball is if you notice one of your teammates downfield waiting for a pass. If you're going to give up possession, you may as well give it to someone on your team rather than the people trying to score on your net. Trying to break this habit will be difficult, especially when you see a nice bounce dribble just asking to be boomed away, but if you can, you should find yourself ranking up quickly. Field awareness is one of those things that you can train, but also comes from playing this game over time and gaining experience. A lot of the goals scored in the replays that I reviewed were directly caused by a double commit that had pretty much just happened. Driving for the ball at the same time as your teammate is bad for more than just one reason. You both waste boost and then need to recover boost after landing, and if you're playing 2v2s you leave your net wide open, and if you're in 3s you leave your teammate in a 1v3. The best way to practice field awareness is by being able to realize what position that you're in and what responsibilities it holds. I am planning to do a more in-depth video for this topic, but the basic responsibilities for each role are as follows. In 2v2s, you have the first and second man. The first man's responsibilities are to challenge the ball, shoot on net, and also passes to the second man. The second man should be ready for the ball after the first man challenges the opponents and makes them throw it away. They should stay close enough to be able to clean up passing plays, but far enough back to defend your net if needed, and they try to buy time for the first man to get back to defense, which means no diving as last man. In 3v3s, we have a first and second man as well, but we also have a new third man to worry about. In threes, the first First man generally wants to be challenging the ball to make the opponents throw it away and applying pressure in any way possible through boost starves, bumps, or demos. The second man in 3v3s receives the challenge ball and also applies pressure in the same way. And the third man is more defensive and does not dive if last man back and then moves up to second man once first one comes back and receives the challenge ball from the new first man. Being able to know at all times what position you currently are in your team's rotation will enable you to be ready for whatever happens to the ball at all times. This tip builds directly off of the previous one, but it is very important to note. You want to always be aware of what part of the field your teammates are able to cover because it shows you what area that you should be covering. For example, if you notice that you and your team are on the same side of the goal, you should start moving towards the other side to make sure the entire net is covered. Another situation that this applies to is when you notice that your entire team is currently on the ground on defense. If this is the case, you might want to consider moving towards the backboard so you can cover high up in the air better and shut down backboard hits. Teammate aware Awareness will also help you on offense since you will know in what direction you should hit the ball as well as which way you should try to direct your 50-50s if they happen. Being able to keep track of where you should be as well as where your teammates are will be challenging at first, but the benefits are definitely worth it. Boost over ball is a motto that I used to believe in heavily until I realized just how many goals I was giving up because of it. You can reach the top of the net with zero boost if you hold jump so theoretically you don't need any boost at all for defense as long as you can predict the shots on your net. Having boost certainly makes things easier, but if getting it means you aren't close enough to the net to defend it, then it won't matter in the end. Since you can reach any scoreable part of the net without any boost, grabbing one small pad gives you a little room for error with your reads. A lot of players also seem to prioritize the 100 boost pads to the point that they would rather be low boost and wait for 100 than to grab the small pads. If you can apply a boost path like this to your rotations, you can keep a decent amount of boost start up at all times. Even just driving straight down the middle line of the map gives you 72 boost. Using these paths for smaller pads will also open up more of the 100 boost pads for your teammates to use 
but do be careful not to let your opponents take boosts that you could have snagged. If you struggle to make plays happen without having 100 boost, I highly recommend turning off unlimited boost and free play and try to practice scoring goals with limited boost. Recreating the feelings that you're going to be having in game rather than having unlimited boost and free play will definitely help you translate your training to your real games a lot better. For the most part, every situation in Rocket League leads to two different outcomes. You have the best case scenario and the worst case scenario. I've seen many players that always try to position their cars for the outcome that results from the best case scenario without any regard for the other one. If you see your teammate off to your side and they're about to be 50 50 instead of going more upfield and waiting for the ball to be hit out to you for a pass, you should instead hang slightly back in case the ball gets pinched out towards your net. It could be argued that you wasted a shot opportunity if you don't preemptively move forward and the ball gets hit up that way, but you don't have any way to guarantee that that would happen. I feel that it's much better to prepare for a save and miss a shot opportunity than to move up for a pass that ends up getting boomed on your net. Positioning yourself in the spot that's best for both scenarios will take experience to figure out, but one thing that you can do to practice this is being aware of where you should have been for each play that happens to the ball. If you can pinpoint if you're hanging back too far to help attack or pushed up too far to defend, you can adjust your playstyle and start reaping the benefits of learning this tip. Using your teammates in diamond might be difficult at times, especially if you're solo queue, but if you can give them the benefit of the doubt, it could pay off greatly. As you rank up, solo plays will have less and less chance of succeeding, so eventually teamwork will be a bit of a necessity. A few ways that you can utilize your teammates are infield passing plays, rolling the ball back to your half if they're back getting boost, and letting them challenge the ball first for easy possession. Another way that I like to use my team is for ease of mind while shooting. An example of this is when I need to shoot towards one side of the net and I notice that my teammate's off to that side. This makes me aware of the fact that even if I shoot too far to that side, my teammate will be able to clean it up. You can also be a good teammate by positioning yourself across the net this way to take the pressure off of your team. Whenever I get teammates that mess up in game, instead of thinking that they're too bad to pass to, I try to think back on games that I messed up in and how bad I was hoping for a chance to make up for it. This logic helps me try to set up teammates that have rough starts, and you'll be surprised at how often they'll gladly accept their chance at redemption and score insane goals. Reading the ball is a skill that most will never master and even those that could be considered masters still mess up from time to time. One of the most misreads in the diamond ranks are ones that are high up above the goal and especially backboard reads. These reads are very difficult to pull off but there are training packs available that are designed specifically for these situations and I try to use them often. One way to get around not knowing these reads is playing off of the backboard more. Doing this allows you to use less boost for high aerials and completely stops the enemy team from using Using the backboard for passes or double touches. The hardest part of these reads for myself is moving my car in the direction I know the ball is about to bounce towards. Usually if the ball is coming towards me but moving from my right to the left, I would jump slightly right when trying to aerial to hit it, but when you're reading a bounce, you have to fight this feeling and jump towards the left because the ball will bounce towards your left after hitting the backboard. So not only are you learning new bounces for backboard reads, but you're also fighting old muscle memory while creating new muscle memory. Luckily, anyone that struggles with these reads can take the easy route by hanging on the backboard more often, and I can personally confirm that this method works even in Grand Champion ranks. A lot of people think that kickoffs in Rocket League are complete luck and that they can't be practiced and those people are more than likely not a very high rank. A kickoff is just a set 50-50 that happens at the start of matches and after goals and 50-50s can be controlled to an extent. A bad kickoff can lead to very easy possession for the other team and in some situations they can lead to goals but not for your team. I plan on making a kickoff tutorial in the future but the two main ones that I use are the regular kickoff and the one that lets you lose the ball back to one of your diagonal boost pads. My regular kickoff consists of me boosting, diagonal speed flipping, and then sideways flipping into the ball. And the way that I lose the ball to one side is the same boosting and diagonal speed flip, but I flip in a way that makes the roof of my car hit the ball, and I angle my car in a way that lines it up so it goes straight back to the diagonal boost. Having multiple kickoffs available to you should keep the enemy team guessing, which is something that you always want to keep doing in Rocket League. If your opponents have an easy time reading what you're about to do, they can adjust accordingly and shut down any play that you try to set up. Having a kickoff that can lead to possession will help start the match in your team's favor, but even if you just learn the regular kickoff, you'll save yourself a lot of tilt from getting kickoff gold. 
The first touch on the ball is by far the most important one when going for any type of play. Hitting the ball with too much power pushes it too far away and hitting it off to the side destroys all of your momentum. Learning what happens when certain parts of your car touch the ball will help your first touch gain by an insane amount. Certain parts of your bumper can hit the ball with more power than others. An example of this is the corner of your bumper versus the middle of it. The belly of your car can slow the ball down a lot, which makes dropping the ball down a lot easier. But if you know how to approach the ball in the air, you can still get an insanely powerful belly boomer. One of the first touches I see messed up the most are the ones that are straight off of bounces to go up into the air. I recommend finding a training pack that has different bounces and practicing getting the ideal first touch on all of them. If you struggle to control your car enough for that first touch, try turning down your sensitivity a little bit. This will make your car move a little less when you're about to hit the ball, resulting in a more accurate hit overall. Practicing any type of aerial shot will be very difficult if you don't have consistent first touches that lead to the setups that you intend, so this should be a priority if you notice this problem in your own games. And that's going to do it for this diamond rank up tutorial. I hope you guys were able to pick up some new tips and possibly break out of your rank. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to drop a like and maybe even a sub, and I will talk to you all in the next one. See ya.